Billionaires have gotta be keeping some secrets as to how they got so rich, right? Well, I'm your host, Michaela, and I've compiled a list of the top 10 secrets billionaires don't want you to know about. And make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you know every time we upload a new video. Starting off this countdown, number 10, pursue your passion. Rich people get rich when they do something they are passionate about. And if you don't love what you do, you won't put in the time and effort needed to become successful. Jim Koch traded in a stable job at the Boston Consulting Group in 1984 to start Boston Beer Co., the business that created Samuel Adams Boston Lager. Koch was driven by his personal love of beer to start the now multi-million dollar business. The most common thing I remind people of is to only pursue something you love, because a small business is going to be very demanding of your time, your energy, it just eats your life, Koch told Business Insider. And if you're doing something you love, then you will accept and even enjoy that. If you're just doing it to get rich, you're going to lose heart. Number nine, use other people's money. To the average person, the old saying that it takes money to make money might sound like a tired cliche used to justify irrational spending. For the wealthy, however, it's a golden rule. The key is leveraging other people's money to increase your own wealth. Trading time for dollars is a loser's game, especially as technology destroys many jobs that don't require a highly skilled human being, someone has said. Using money from banks or investors and hiring people to work for you is time-tested formula for building wealth. Not to mention the tax laws, which heavily favor businesses. Whether you're fundraising to start a business or flipping real estate for a profit, relying on other people's money to do the heavy lifting greatly increases the return. Of course, it's also riskier than relying on your own funds. But as legend Legendary investor Warren Buffett once put it, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Number eight, don't waste money to impress others. Most rich people don't spend their time and money trying to impress others, someone said. They are not in a race. They know they have made it, so their attention is not what others think. In fact, many wealthy individuals wouldn't have become rich if they had spent their hard-earned money buying things to keep up with others. Authors Thomas Stanley and William Danko said much the same thing in their 1996 bestseller, The Millionaire Next Door, The Surprising Secret of America's Wealthy, writing that a couple of key secrets of the country's richest people are living below their means and rejecting big spending lifestyles. Spending money to appear rich before you actually are rich is a surefire way to sabotage your wealth-building goals. So focus on what matters, accumulating wealth in the coming years. Number seven, donate to charitable causes. Wealthy individuals know that donating to charity doesn't only help the world at large, it also helps their finances. If you analyze your tax return rather than take the standard deduction, you can deduct charitable contributions to qualified organizations. The more you deduct, the more you reduce your taxable income. Charitable giving is an excellent tool to mitigate tax consequences, someone said. The wealthy know this and you don't have to be wealthy to do it. Whether you write a check to your favorite charity or donate clothes you no longer wear to goodwill, hang on to your receipts and claim your charitable deduction. Or be more strategic with your giving by setting up a donor advised fund, they continue. These simple low cost funds are available through investment firms and let you get a tax deduction at the time you set aside money in the account. You can then make grants by following your own time schedule. Number six, save first, spend later. In Warren Buffett's words, if you buy things you don't need, you will soon sell things you need. This is exactly why most of the rich people save first and spend later. So stop cribbing about your inability to save and get rid of excuses like insufficient income, high expenses, or the no compromise policy on fulfillment of the YOLO, you only live once motto. The key to saving lives in the habit of saving first and spending later. Every month, set aside a part of your income as your savings. It can be 20%, 30%, or 50%, any percentage to begin with. Just ensure to be disciplined and stay true to the habit. It. And remember that whenever your income rises, increase the proportion of savings instead of spiking up your spends upon obtaining more money. Number five, know what you're paying in investment fees. The rich also pay attention to investment fees, something many others overlook. For example, more than half of workers don't know they're paying fees on their workplace retirement savings account, according to a study by the National Association of Retirement Plan Participants. Yet those fees can eat away at your returns. More you're paying in mutual fund fees or transaction fees means less money in your pocket, someone said. Even small fees can have a big impact. If you invest $100,000 over 20 years and pay a 1% annual fee, your portfolio value will be around $30,000 thousand dollars less than if you had paid a 0.25% annual fee. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission's Office of Investor Education and Advocacy, check your account statement to see what fees you're paying. If they seem high, the SEC recommends asking whether the cost can be reduced. You also should shop around for accounts and investment firms with low fees, which can help you keep more of the money you worked hard to save. 
Number four, pen down your thoughts every day. Before this digital world bombarded everyone's lives, remember the age old tradition way of journaling each and every day by writing it down with pen and paper? That is in fact amongst the most common habits which many rich and successful people follow. When you write and not type every day, you reflect upon your thoughts. Slow down and train the mind to think coherently. This way, penning down your thoughts and experiences each day enables you to reflect on how your day went, what you could have done differently, and what learning got you from little or big experiences that day. It's completely fine if you wish to type an online blog or journal instead of penning it down. Either way, it's all about allowing yourself to reflect upon your thoughts and actions peacefully. Number three, choose the right retirement savings account. You can earn tax benefits by contributing to a 401k or similar plan because contributions come out of your paycheck before taxes, lowering your taxable income, and the money grows tax deferred. When you withdraw that money in retirement, however, it will be taxed at your regular income tax rate, which is currently as high as 37% for the wealthiest taxpayers. You don't get any tax breaks by investing in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds through a brokerage account. But if you hold these investments for more than a year, they'll be taxed at a long-term capital gains rate, which range from 0% to 20%, but tops out at 15% for most taxpayers. The types of investments you have in your accounts can have a dramatic effect on your long-term returns, someone said. Typically, it's best to keep securities such as bonds, mutual funds, and divided paying stocks in tax-deferred retirement savings accounts. Then keep your individual stocks in brokerage accounts. Number two, they invest. Once building up an emergency fund, people say their clients have organized investment plans, whether it's in stocks, bonds, or exchange traded funds, ETFs. It suggested setting up a monthly or bi-monthly automatic transfer of cash from your checking account into an investment account. This way you can forget about having to remember to manually invest and you can then learn to live on the funds you have available. Most of my clients do not miss having that money in their cash flow, and then they can use those invested savings for future car purchases, vacations, or other short or long-term goals without incurring additional debt, someone said. As a general rule of thumb, you should save at least roughly 20% of your income each month. And what the person said before agrees. This 20% goes towards your saving plans, emergency fund, retirement, and investments. How much you take out of your paycheck to invest depends heavily on your income and investment goals. But getting used to living without that 20% is a good start for both your savings and your investments. Now coming in at number one, you can buy an apartment building even if you're not rich. The years since the pandemic started have been a roller coaster. Historically though, real estate investing offers the best long-term returns. Some people have said that they like investing with the company Diversity Fund. They supposedly help you make long-term investments in apartments and office buildings all over the country, and you don't have to be a millionaire. And you can also get started with only $500. You can see exactly which properties are included in your portfolios, like a 200 unit apartment complex in Texas or a 59 unit building in San Diego. And you don't have to be the landlord because they know how to ride at the market's ups and downs, they historically have seen annual returns of 70% to 18%, though they can't make any promises. As a partial owner, you can make money on rent payments and when property values go up. And that is everything. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.